All right, so I'm gonna start off by uh, putting these some gloves on here. I'm doing a short cap for a friend, my friend Pablo. And I'm gonna start off with a grease and wax remover. Now this is a fiberglass. I'm gonna be showing you how to do fiberglass. Uh, you know when you paint fiberglass. So I'll start off by cleaning this with the grease and wax remover. You want to clean the whole thing. And as I'm rubbing this, I can actually hear the static. I can hear the static from me wiping on this. Now, years ago when I first started, I did one of these caps for a friend at work. And I didn't do anything to it. Uh, with the DX103. Boy, you learn quick. So, this stuff here, like, if, you know, certain cars like uh, Corvettes, you know, they are fiberglass. So, you got to use this DX103 uh, when you're doing these cars. Now the good thing about the uh, cor like if you was doing a Corvette, they ground it. So by them being grounded, it helps take away from some of the static or whatever, you know, the, the reaction you have when you're painting. So what I did with that first cap, I cleaned it with the uh, grease remover that I started standing on it right away doing the body work. What ended up happening by me not cleaning with this, when I went to paint it, that thing just, the paint, you know, it looked like grease was all over it. it the paint, it just wouldn't lay flat. It was uh, like fish iron and it, it was just, so I, I went and talked to my paint supplier and I'm, you know, my buddy Jerry, and I asked him, I said, well, what went wrong? They said, well, you gotta, after you uh, degree, you know, use grease remover on this, grease and wax remover on, on the fiberglass panels like this, before you start doing any sanding, you wanna spray it down with this DX103. And um, I had to sand that whole cap back down. Uh, but before I did, I sprayed it with the DX103. And when I went back to, uh, to shoot the base on it, it laid down just like painting on metal or any other piece that you would paint. So like when you paint plastics, and uh, fiberglass, this DX103 uh, is what you need to be doing when you're doing that. So now I'm going to go back and finish degreasing the rest of this. And then I'll come back and spray it down with the DX103. Okay, so I just wanted to show you how much... Uh, how much comes off of that panel with that grease and a wax remover? And I'll go over it again, but this is just the first time. So, you know, I'm gonna change it. I clean the top and one side. Then I'm gonna clean this other side with a new rag 
and then I go over the whole uh, thing with another rag, but that's that's a lot of crap coming off of there. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over. Now that I'm done with the grease and wax remover, I'm gonna spray this uh, DX three o uh, one o three on here. Spray the DX one o three. Still actually cleaning as I take this stuff off of here. Still, Okay, so if you see here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to tape around where the rubber seals is. So when I scuff these up, when I, when I scuff up close to the edges here, I won't scuff up and dull up the rubber seals. So this tape is pretty cheap. Well, it was. Um, and it's thin, so all I need to do is get it right up next to the, right up on the, against the rubber seal. So then that way, when I scuff, it won't dull up the rubber seal. And all I'm doing is the outside edge. I won't... I'll pull this back off once I'm done uh, 
scuffing, let it dry, and then when I'm ready to paint, when I'm ready to paint, I'll pull this edge, i pull this back off, and then retake this edge again when I'm ready to paint. Okay, so if you see here, what I'm doing is I'm just gonna tape around where the rubber seals is so when I scuff these up when I, when I scuff up close to the edges here I won't scuff up and dull up the rubber seals so this tape is pretty cheap well it was um, and it's thin, so all I need to do is get it right up next to the, right up on the, against the rubber seal. So then that way, when I scuff, it won't dull up the rubber seal. So I go around all the rubber seals and take them off. And all I'm doing is the outside edge. I won't, I'll pull this back off. Once I'm done uh, scuffing, let it dry, and then when I'm ready to paint, when I'm ready to paint, I'll pull this edge, i pull this back off and then retake this edge again when I'm ready to paint. So. So when I'm ready to paint, I will pull this tape off and retape it again and I'll seal off the whole uh, window seal right before I'm ready to paint there. So what I want to do is dip some of that uh, 3M scuff it paint. Uh, I just want to dip it in the water. Then I just want to come in and I could do this whole thing with this, but I'm just doing around the outside edges. And then I'm going to come in with a sander. I'm going to come in with a sander and uh, do all of this with like maybe a 600 or 800 grit. Because I got some 800 grit that I barely ever use. Uh, but 600 for. Uh, I'm doing more of that than I want to. But uh, 600 grit is good for uh, sanding for base paint. But 800 is due too. 
So, cause all I'm gonna do with this, cause it's not body work to be done on here. All I want to do is dull this paint up and get it where my, cause I'm changing this color over from red to black. So I dull this up, sand it, get it prepped. Then I seal it and then I paint it black and then clear it. So 800 sandpaper will be good enough. scuff around here really really good along these edges all the way around and then what you want to do is you want to take some water if it was summertime I would probably be doing this outside and I would be using uh, a water hose. But bucket of water, nice clean rag. When you're using the scuffet, you wanna you wanna scuff around there, but then you wanna rinse it off with water, then you wanna dry around those areas just to make sure you're getting all that grit. Okay, so as you see, what I'm doing, I'm using 3M, it's a hook it, it's called hook it um, system. Where it's got a pad and uh, it's like, I don't know, Velcro, Velcro on there and the sandpaper sticks to that and it goes over the contours pretty good so they call it hook it and uh, all I'm doing here I'm sanding this with a uh, 600 grit to get this down and sand it and ready for paint Okay, so now that we got this all scuffed up, sanded, it, <clears throat> I taped it up. You tape around the rubber seals, all your aluminum or chrome that's on there. <clears throat> I didn't want to pull those emblems off. So I just taped around them. And we, he want this black, so I got it all sanded, <clears throat> scuffed, 
paint uh, taped. Now it's ready for the sealer. So I'll come back in next and I'll put the sealer on here. And then I come back over with coat with the base coat, which will be black. And then uh, I use the Concept Clear. It's got U good UV protections, so I use the Concept Clear. So I come back and show you what it's like uh, once I seal it. Okay, as you see now, <clears throat> I got that cab. And uh, I got it covered. With the sealer. So it's covered with the sealer. So I come back now that it's been sealed. And I put the black on there, the, the base coat. <clears throat> and in between of each coat of the sealer. I use the tack rag, as you can see here. Use a tack rag in between each coat. I'm using a tack rag <clears throat> for any dust or overspray that's on the cab. So after I shoot the black first coat of base coat on there. I tack it and then I put a second coat and it should probably be covered with that. I might have to do a third coat. But the black cover is pretty good. So two to three coats of base coat, get it all covered. But in between each coat I attack it <clears throat> before I put the clear on. But now when you're putting the clear on, <laughs> you don't tack it between the clear. You just wait. You know, I normally go 10 minutes uh, between coats with the clear, 15 minutes. Uh, I normally uh, <clears throat> like touch where where the tape is there on that piece there. I normally touch that <clears throat> and uh, at, just as that clear is starting to get sticky to my touch, then I, I go and uh, shoot another coat of clear. Okay, well I didn't come and show you when I shot the base, but this is it all cleared up. Turned out really nice. I won't be wet sanding and buffing this cap. Uh, he, I don't think he really wanted that done. If you do, I can wet sand and buff it when it's on the truck stable. But he used it, it's, he's he's got a pretty nice truck, so I don't think he's gonna want it wet sand and buff though. But it, it's gonna look it's gonna look real nice the way it's set. So man, this thing it took a little bit more paint and clear than what I thought it would take to shoot this thing. I mean, you know, I have never painted one uh, this big. I did one for a co-worker years ago when I was just first starting to learn to paint. I did it for my friend Jim and uh, I kind of just did it for you know let him buy the materials just so I could practice uh painting back then you know so um and his was a, a s10 a much smaller cap but boy this thing really used the paint you know by it being a different color so but that's it in a nutshell that's it okay so I do like to pull my tape off before uh, the clear is hardened, hardened. So, still sticky. But 
but you got to be careful when you're doing this because of the fact that if you let this fall onto the clear, you're going to cause extra work for yourself. So you really got to be careful when you're pulling the tape and paper off. Okay. So I do like to pull my tape off before uh, the clear is hardened, hardened. So still sticky. But you gotta be careful when you're doing this because of the fact that if you let this fall onto the clear, you're gonna cause extra work for yourself. So you really gotta be careful when you're pulling the tape and paper off. But I like to get it off before it dries because if it dry, uh, it can be kind of hard to get off of there. Voila!